we are. It's Thursday morning and our July camp out in the Blue Mountains. Everybody's been having a great time. Lots of stuff been going on. I think last night it might have been mostly up on the hill. I'm not sure yet. We're going to find out. So who'd like to start? Oh, come on. Not everybody at once. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Um, what time did you guys come up? Probably around 11. 11? Okay. So uh, Claire was in a tent and I was in the Jeep and we were both kind of snoozing. And um, I heard the couple cars come up and it was uh, Terry and Courtney. They were coming up to try to scare Claire. And oh, among me, other things. Among other things. <laughs> so, um, so I heard them get out and they're trying to be quiet, but Courtney's laughing and snorting. So that's, and I'm just like, just listening to it and I'm kind of dozing in and out, just listening to them laughing. Um, I could hear Claire, Courtney, uh, Terry. I wasn't sure who else was there because I'd heard Rob's name brought up. So I thought maybe Rob no. was around, I didn't know if was around. but as they're doing that, um, the back of my Jeep is up. So my tailgate's up and, um, I'm about three steps away from the coolers. <clears throat> if you walk from the back of my Jeep to the coolers, three steps. So as I'm listening to everybody, I hear um, crunch, 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 walking like gravel, really heavy walking like gravel. Not thinking anything of it, like usual. Someone's walking up to the cooler, cooler pops up. I hear the cooler pop up. I hear rummaging around. I hear rustling of the paper. We have plastic sacks that have some uh, fruit in there and, and ice and stuff like that. And then uh, then I hear the lid close and snap. They snap on each side. And, you know, I never looked up to see who it was. I just figured it was, I thought maybe Rob was getting a drink or, you know, someone was getting a pop out of it or something like that. Because the whole time I can hear people talking. And so I didn't think anything of it. And then uh, a little bit later... Uh, Terry walks over to me, and she said, um, hey, do you want me to shut the back of your Jeep? And I'm like, yeah, you can. She goes, um, by the way, she goes, did you hear anybody, like, walking around or in the cooler? And I said, yeah, I did. I go, "Was who was it? Was it, was it one of you guys? She said, no, none of us did it. But we heard it. We heard someone walking over, right? Or yeah. walking back. Walking, walking away, yeah. So they heard that them someone in it and then walking away whereas I heard someone walking to it and getting into it but I never heard any walking away wow. and after the fact there's no gravel where this it's just all dirt so and I've heard this before where I've heard gravel but this there was no gravel there and we immediately got up looked around got the lights on it to see if there was any uh, tracks or anything like that but there were no tracks. I mean, yeah. I seriously thought they were kidding. They were teasing me. Because she goes, okay, I said, are you sure nobody was in there? She's like, no, we didn't do that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, but really, <laughs> did you do that? And she's like, no, no. So, uh, you know, it was an absolutely you know, fabulous experience to have. And um, I, I, don't know what it, I don't know what to say about it, you know. It, up there is, like, really... There's stuff going on up that up there, and you know I don't know if it's all Sasquatch. I really think there's a lot of spiritual stuff, a lot of spirits up there, too. But uh, that was kind of unusual to have someone digging through your. We were actually over at Rob's when it happened. Yeah. Wow. Did that you... which isn't far away. Mm -mm. We won't talk about it. It's embarrassing. Did oh. you look for fingerprints? <laughs> yeah, we did. We looked around. We looked to see if anything was missing, missing. but. We weren't really sure to begin with what, because everything had gotten moved away around because we'd come up from the grocery store. Yeah. So things kind of got moved around and stuff like that. Was it relatched? Yeah, yes. and it was. That's the thing is to see. I heard it unsnap because it's big. It's a big cooler, and I heard it snap, snap, and it was real. It was so loud. Yeah. And I did not one time think to even because <coughs> I could hear everybody, and but I, I was just figured there, and it did not. It didn't go up. We I didn't was hear it go them. up. Yeah. Well, I didn't see it go up. Yeah. I just all I heard stuff. was snap, snap, all the rustling, and it went on for several seconds. In fact, I was kind of like, kind of thinking, geez, what are they looking for? 
and then um, I heard it, the lid shut and snap, snap again. So, wow, I, interesting. Yeah. So they've been watching you guys do that for a while, so now they know exactly. They wanted to go check it out, give you a little sound experience. Yeah. Say hi. So I don't know. Cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's what caught our attention was, uh, uh, for me anyway, was I heard ice in the ice chest, just like a big chunk falling down off the side. You know how it would naturally do that. And then we got quiet and heard the footsteps going away. But it didn't sound like gravel to me. It was just, you know, heavy stepping. Wow. And we had, Terry was walking around too, just to kind of, and it did sound like Terry walking on dirt. Mm -mm. It was a gravelly sound. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then, let me see. I like that you have a list. Yes. Check in it <laughs> So twice. we got that story. Um, <laughs> and then later, the three of us, oh, I guess you were out there too, um, heard footsteps on the gravel up past our camp a little bit where the road is up there. And uh, I heard stick breaks. And then later when, when Rob, Kelly... Claire and I were sitting out there at the table. Um, I saw flashes of light across over here behind the horse barn, and uh, I saw two red lights that were very close together, but they kind of had a trail behind them, and they went across a little clearing up there. Um, of course, I don't. It's a, a dark, and it, I can't see over there for distance, uh, but. It seemed like they went fast and went into a little clump of trees. And then later on, I saw a single red light. So. Wow, cool. Yeah. How long did the, did you see it for? A millisecond. Oh, okay. It was quick. So it wasn't sustained? No. Okay. No. And then I did see a flash of white light. Wow. You had reported, and you I had... I did. I yep, saw my I first flash of white right behind on the hill um, around the, you know, just straight up from our, from to the right. I saw just a flash, white light, and I stared for a while to see if it was a star behind the trees coming through. No, nothing here. Huh? I, but I, I seen the light, but it, I can actually see a starting and ending point. It was like a, like a, like a late white laser pointer for me. It was just like, bing, and then it was gone, and then bing. And it was gone. Just like wow. a ching, ching. Just right through the woods, right, right in there. Well, you know, yesterday yeah, yesterday yeah. evening I was sitting on that side of the fire looking up between the buildings toward the hill. And I kept thinking I was seeing something moving in the trees up there. Was something, because you can see the sky beyond the trees. Right. And something was blocking it out. But every time I'd stop and look, okay, there's nothing there. And then, you know, I'd go back to talking or whatever I was doing. And then it'd catch my eye again. It's like, no. Wait a minute, somebody's up there, but nobody was up there. Um, everybody was accounted for, and and yeah, there was just something black moving between the trees right up there on that hill. Mm. So can't say for a fact what it was, but it was right in the vicinity there where you guys are reporting the lights. Then after uh, <clears throat> Courtney and Terry, uh, Terry took or court, they went down back down to get the little kiddo uh, settled to sleep. And Claire and I were just up there by ourselves. And uh, Claire started talking, you know, to the forest people. We're just kind of just getting out there. Hey, you know, we'd really like it if you want to come and, you know, visit us. And, you know, um, we're not afraid and you don't need to be afraid of us. And um, so she was doing that talking for a little while. And, she, and then she goes, um, and yeah, and even if you don't want to come in, you want to give us a sign that you're here and you're, you're, you're listening to us, you know, if you want to, um, make a sound, she was, or you could throw something, you could toss, just, toss, toss something, yeah, sorry, you could toss something at us, um, like a pine cone or, or, or a, a, you know, a small rock or pebble. And, um, there was nothing for about, in about five minutes later, I would say about five minutes later, there was a rock, something was tossed towards us. 
and I didn't, we didn't see it. We didn't on the visually gravel. It was see on the gravel. it. Yeah, but we definitely heard it. And it was, um, you know, it was so quiet up there, but it was something got tossed towards us and we heard uh -huh. it. And if I had to guess what it was, I would have said it was another small rock getting tossed. So. Wow. Yeah. Cool. All right. Who'd like to go next? I have something. I got up purposely between when the moon set before the sun came up. So, like you said, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I stayed down in the camp or and went outside. Tina was back in the RV. And I sat in the chair and just was real quiet and just kind of meditating. And, oh, 10 minutes after I got out here, I heard one wood knock real close. And then about five minutes later, from another direction, I heard a second wood knock. And like almost like like five minutes apart, the third would knock from another direction. So it was just bomb, bomb, bomb. And um, I had and then nothing, nothing before that, nothing after it. Just three ones in succession. I thought that was kind of cool. Didn't you guys say you heard somebody walk through your camp at one thirty? Um, one thirty. Yeah, right something. next to the window. It wasn't big boom steps. It was just like a really. It was a long stride, but it wasn't like a, like, boom, boom. It was just, like, they were just trying to get past the motorhome. Like, somebody was in a hurry trying to walk past. Oh, okay. And that was one thirty. Yeah, none of us were down there. That's what I was just going to wonder. It was just going to ask, anybody did walk past there? It wasn't on the road. It was next to the window. We had all the windows open, all the blinds open, the vents open. So, we it was, essentially, we were, like, being in a tent, you know. Um, it was cool. Well. Interesting. I just got the sense that 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 it was not human. <laughs> cool. Okay. And I got, uh, I think I heard the same thing that that uh, Terry did, but I think my timing was different. Um, I was out here at the campfire at uh, early, and at four twenty, um, I heard a wood knock, and ten minutes later, another single. But it's like uh, uh, not loud, but 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 very clear. Another ten minutes a single. Another ten minutes a single, and this continued until five ten, which is like twenty minutes before sunrise. That's the same pattern that that I've heard before. It wasn't wood knocks; it was howls, but the same sequence. Ten minute, you know, one one uh, howl, ten minute interval. One hell, ten minute interval, like a snooze alarm. Ah, uh, okay. Just before sunrise. Okay. That's the way I was looking at it. It's an alarm. Yeah. Countdown. Yeah. yeah. Probably a countdown for him. Okay. Ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes. And then the last one's probably like a double knock. Get in. <laughs> and I had, and I, I, I timed it every single, every single one. Wow. I was sitting out here alone. There's nothing to do. So. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, I did hear at four, at four twenty nine. Um, I heard. Right over here on the Gifting Road on the other side of the creek. I, I heard a, a very loud, big-bodied uh, huff, the way the way a, a deer will huff when it's when it's um, spooked or trying to trying to spook something that, that it can't see. Only this was not a deer; it was a big-bodied hoof, and it was coming this way. And I thought that was really unusual. Check the time, and it was like two minutes later. I heard I heard uh, Peter. 300 yards away across this clearing, waking up Rainer for, for their day trip. And so I think the two are related. It, I got the impression that it could, if it was over there, it could certainly see uh, Peter's tent, uh, Peter's camp. And so I got the impression that it was a warning huff to whatever's over there. That somebody was up that there. That he was just getting out of the tent. Okay, cool. <clears throat> now, um, you heard something this morning, too, didn't you, Sandy? I did. So it was about, we figure, 6.15, 6.20. I was in the tent. Um, and what I heard was directly <coughs> behind the tent, across the little creek here, or puddle, or pond, whatever it is, in the woods. Um, it sounded like somebody was redecorating the forest back there. There was a lot of stick breaking and crashing back there. Um, it went on for a little bit. Um, and then it was like a boulder. You know how a boulder, when it turns over in the river, it makes kind of that hollow clack thud. sound, thud? It, it was like that. And then that was the end of the stick crashing and banging. And then, uh, so I had, you know, I was awake. I was, it was light out. I turned over then, and 
Then I heard, heard Kevin out here talking to Mitch. And I heard walking in the gravel. And I was like, oh, campers are up. Okay, I need to get up and get coffee. So I got my shoes on and stuff, got, came out. Nobody was out here except Kevin was sitting at the fire. And it was about just after 6.30. Uh, and I said, um, where's Mitch? Were you, weren't you just talking to Mitch? He's like, no, nobody's here. No, I heard you and Mitch talking down here. He goes, no, no one's here. I said, I swear you guys were talking and somebody was walking in the gravel down here. So now this gets a little stranger because I was awake at five mm -hmm. and my tent is not even a hundred feet from you. I, I could hear the, zi the zipper on your tent. Yeah. Um, I, I was awake at five. I heard uh, doors opening, closing, the zipper on the tent. Um, I did not hear any noise across over there. You heard them rearranging the forest. Yep. I heard nothing. Okay. Not a thing. I got up. I came up here and I got my coffee and I sat over there in my chair. Kevin is over here tidying up the table. And from up here, I heard a series of, hoo, hoo, hoo. and I'm looking at Kevin and he's not responding to it. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe he thinks it's something else and it's not, you know, it was just some wildlife that you must recognize because you're not responding to this is interesting. And I'm looking at you and it did it like a, like three times, a series of three, three times. So there, I think there was probably nine altogether just right up here and you didn't hear it. No, nope, didn't hear a thing. <laughs> so I guess we're all hearing what we're meant to hear. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, um, last night we were sitting around the fire and Terry and I heard this distant yell. Yeah. And yeah, we heard a distant yell. Um, it was quite a ways away, but it was very loud. Wow. But nobody else heard it. No, it was just the two of us. Yeah. Oh, what, what time? Uh, before you went up at about 11. Yeah, right. Yeah. So around 11. That was, that was up there? That was after Barb was had gone right to bed, here. I think. Yeah, okay. you finally went at 11. <coughs> yeah. Right before 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a little after that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Before they, you went out. Mm, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we had some gifting things going on too, wasn't there? Yeah, Penny and I have been gifting since Sunday up the trail here. There's a big log, and we've been laying out a bunch of food, and uh, nothing's been touching it. And right across the way from the log is a big stump, and we got peanut butter on there. And I brought some packing tape, real sticky stuff, and just kind of made a strip of it on the side in case something reached around, they'd get their hair on it, because I was reading about some people have success with that, so we tried it. And yesterday, people have been going up the trail hiking from our camp saying, you better go check your, your area. It looks like something's been messing with your log up there. And we heard it a couple times, and Penny and I said, yeah, we better go up there. And then a raven flies by and has a Cheeto in its mouth. And I says, that does it. I know that something's up there, you know. Just like last year, it, when we got up there, it like, looked like a combination of the ravens and something else was raiding our area because the ravens, you know, they peck holes and things and they had the Tupperware bottom upside down and they pecked a hole and everything was taken out. So I knew that was ravens. Um, we had a, one of those clamshell things that they put muffins in from Costco. We had a watermelon in there that was cut in, in like a quarter. And it's probably getting a little rancid. It's been up there for four days in this heat. But something got into it and took a looked like a big bite out of it, like a six inch gap. And a few feet up the trail, back in the woods, it looked like something spit it out on a log because there was a big gob of it laying on the log, like you know, yeah. the same size as the it chunk that's like missing. It. Yeah. So that was curious. Um, how how big was the chunk? Pardon? How big was the chunk? Probably as like, big as your hand. Okay. Yeah, a little slimy hanging down over the... Um, and I had a Tupperware container full of apple pie because I know Sasquatch's favorite pie is apple, from my experience, <laughs> so we brought that. Uh, that was interesting because <clears throat> there was nowhere to be found. The container's gone, the pie's gone. 
you know, a raven would have left it there and chewed a hole in the bottom. So that was missing. The other interesting thing across <coughs> the trail was that stump because the tape had been disturbed and I found on the ground a stick about this long, about that wide, and it had tape wrapped around it and it stuck out, looked like a flag, like something had made a little toy out of it. I don't know, but I can't see a raven doing that. And you could look at it up close and you could see some wavy hair sticking out of it. So I put that in a Ziploc bag, going to take that home, look at it closer. It's got some fingerprints in it too. And I can't rule out mine when I put it up there, but the hairs are unusual. So, um, um, also there was a, a pink hair in it. Yeah, there was a pink, you know, somebody here put it up the sun and thought it looked kind of pinkish. I can't explain that. We had a doll next to the tape. It has real purple hair. And, you know, I could have got stuck to it, but I can't explain the pink part. Okay. One of our members here has some pink in her hair, but we can't imagine how that would get in our tape, you know, even if she just walked by. So Yeah. I don't know. And wasn't the tape, didn't you have, say, one part of it was folded back on itself and that had been peeled apart when it was wrapped onto the stick? Right, right. It looked like it had been wrapped around the stick and then, yeah, it, it looked like it had to be manipulated to get like that. I tried to even undo it and it's just a solid flag, you know, kind of wow. taped together solidly on that stick like and it was on the ground so oh. that was very unusual. i think they were maybe showing you that uh they were onto what you were doing that and playing be. the game that could be yeah yeah <laughs> just like last year we feel it was a combination and definitely a raven always involved but something else unexplained is also there wow. you know we used to get a combination of critters coming by cool so. and then we regifted. yeah we regifted last night and we went up there this morning, and looks like the ravens beat us to it this morning. Yeah, we've been seeing see Cheetos flying yeah, by. Yeah, Cheetos have been <laughs> flying by. So um, sometimes the ravens get in there so quick that nothing else has a chance to touch it, you know. Okay. But we left the food because something could happen up there today. Okay. And we might get more reports that. But we okay. picked up the nacho Doritos so that we aren't going to have any more ravens. Okay. Um, obviously flying over with orange in their mouth. Right. Okay. And we left the half a cantaloupe. We exchanged the watermelon because they had such a adverse reaction to the taste. We put a half a cantaloupe up it, there in the clamshell. And a bird, it's not in slices this time, so a bird can't pick it up and manipulate it. The, and I closed that clamshell super hard, so it's going to have to be hands and something to get into that and to also eat the cantaloupe, manipulate it, because it's a half a one and it's solid and it's heavy. And that wasn't touched last night by whatever got into it. Okay. With the, you know, it was all tore up this morning, but that wasn't touched, okay. weirdly enough. Wow. Cool. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? No. Nope. All right, well, I guess that wraps up our Thursday morning meeting, and uh, we're going to have another great day around here. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.